Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Marvel Podcast. Thank you for coming back and listening, watching, wherever it is that you are. Today, we have got Caitlin and Amber, two identical twins. And I'm not going to lie, this episode was absolutely brilliant. It was so funny. We had tears, we had joy, we had sadness, we had serious, we had banter. But we covered the topics of having the, the importance of having support around yourself and the importance of breakups that they can have on a female and also the overall mental health and where to look when you're struggling. It was really fun, really interesting to hear from a female's perspective of what they also go through, and it's not only just about men. So I hope that you do enjoy this episode. I hope that you can take it away, and especially if you are a female in this world and you are struggling, I think that this is a good story to relate to. Sink and I was sitting here and just rambling up, and when I put them in the sink, I like to wash them. I keep forgetting that they get stuck, so when I'm trying to lift it up, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's water, the water's flicking. Oh, you're just shitting yourself like that. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I don't do that. <laughs> 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 oh my god, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right, podcast is over. Okay. All right, right, ready? Sure, Jess, <laughs> Jess, you ready? Yeah, ready. Mm-hmm. So, today we have got... I'm Caitlin. And today we have also got... Amber. Jess. Jess. <laughs> yeah, today we have got Caitlin and Amber today. And today I'm actually not going to lie, I'm really excited about this one. Because, <laughs> like I said before, you came on. You were coming on to talk about you and like what we're about on here is mental health. And obviously the story that you want to share is your own personal one. So it's going to be it's gonna be fun. It's going to be dark. It's going to be sad. But funny. <laughs> Um, and if you need any tissues, I'll let you know. If we don't have any, <laughs> of course. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but just fill me in. Like, so tell me about yourself, or if you've shared a lot of stuff then together yeah. about so, who you are. Yeah. Um. At the moment, I'm working full time. I'm a brow expert. I'm a makeup artist. Um. Part time dance. Yeah. Um. We do a lot of things together, mm. growing up together, literally live in the same house, live in the same room, like everything, we're just always together. So. Basically, we've been sharing everything since the womb. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Generally, so. Oh, so is that actually hairdressing that's hairdressed? No, no, this is mine. Oh, is that yours? This is mine. Oh, that's mine. That's right. this, that, this is his fleece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. So, what was just like growing up then? Oh, gosh, oh, we're wow. always, I'm intrigued now. We were yeah. like tit for tat, honestly. Okay. So we were always just with each other. Very, we're very protective of each other still to this day. Um, lots of bickers and arguments. Over like the most stupidest things. Ever. Like it could be like over hair and hairbrush or like socks on the floor. Like it's bickers, but we just look at each other and we know instantly like it's not that deep. We, we were just, just laughing. <laughs> Has it ever got that deep between us? Um, oh, oh. Has it? I think it was one time where I think we just like during each other like the whole day. No, it was during <laughs> lockdown. I think. Trying to write, listen, picture this: we're in a, we're like in our home. We had an argument. Trying to avoid each other in a little home, it's hard. During COVID. Mm. Yeah, it is difficult. Very hard. We've only got four doors in the house, and we've got nowhere else to run You've got to. Four doors in <laughs> the house. Literally, like little, uh, we live in a we, flat. So it's yeah, we can't okay, run okay, anywhere. Okay. We can't go nowhere. Yeah. Can't run out. <laughs> 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 can't run. Can't run upstairs. I can't even get upstairs. There is no upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you just do then if you've crossed each other? Maybe you went to the kitchen and you're scanning her crisp that she's bought mm. the other day. Something like that. Would you have killed her at that moment in time? Oh no, it's only a bag of crisp. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Did you want like a full on scrap? Yeah. No. no. If it was us two, we would have like full on, like we're not even related, we're just best friends, but, <laughs> oh like Tom Kelly, I would have killed him. <laughs> <laughs> on, on I'm I think it's because we've always shared everything. So really, like stuff like that, it doesn't really Famous get on our though. nerves. It doesn't yeah. really like, oh, okay, it's right, it's just packet of crisps, whatever. But sometimes she does leave food there in the drawer. They've got a little snack drawer. So she's got like a chocolate bar and it's like been sat there for a week, right? Ages, ages, ages. Not unopened, unopened. Not so I'll go, oh, do you know what? I'll have that. And as soon as I like finish, I eat at a, you know, discard of the evidence, you know. <laughs> She goes, where's my chocolate bar? I went, oh, now you want it. Now that it's gone missing, now you want it. Right. But it's just little things like that. Like, we're always going to, we've always been close. We've always been best friends. Mm. We, like, in school, we was always With around each other. each other. 
in we um in school they kind of put us in different forms, didn't they? So they wanted us to kind of make our own friends. It didn't really work because we have the same friends anyway. Mm. So if we were like a like a boomerang, they could just tell us apart and then they'll just fly right back. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. that way you just always describe yourself as a boomerang. Yeah. yeah. Do you, do, well, you now, pull, yeah. do you don't pull a boomerang apart though? Because you you've done that. A boomerang's <laughs> that and it spins back. Oh, is it one of those little tiny toys then? Like you, the little suction things we could. I don't know what it's called. Why didn't you just say like a like a lazy band or something? Like you just. I was gonna up. say that. You weren't a lazy. No. <laughs> Come on now, Jess. Ah, <laughs> Jess. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. don't worry, Amber. I'll get your name right. It's absolutely fine. This little six-year-old got me caught up. My God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I've known them longer than you. Bonjour. Your, your camera's gone out of focus. Out of focus. That's out of order, isn't it? Right. Oh, well, what are you playing at? Carry on. Uh, I, so when you were in school, and that, what mm. what was what was it like being like? Would you use the only identical twins? Yeah. Did you get it? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the boys broke couldn't say sorry at the same time. Did you always get like a lot of looks and all that? Like, wow, they're twins. Wow. Yeah. yeah, a lot of double takes. A lot yeah. of like, do you feel each other's pain? Or like, do you know, do you feel what she's feeling? Like, yes, we do. Like pain, not as in like people flip it and make it something that it's not supposed to be. Mm. Like, oh, God. <laughs> No. Yeah. But I, yeah. I could tell by that eye roll that you yeah. probably you <laughs> went through that a lot. He's like, ah, just shut up and stop yeah, asking yeah, me these yeah, questions. Yeah, inappropriate, you yeah. know. But it's always but. every day, like, oh, which one are you? Are you Amber or Caitlin? Wait, they'll just like stop us like in the middle of the hall. We go, let me guess. Amber, Caitlin, and we we'll go, no, I'll go tell them next. Time. And they go again, and we we stand in there for about five minutes, like you know, we've got a class to go to, and we we stand in it, like, playing guess who? We'll like, spot the difference. We need to go. <laughs> 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 Literally, like. Did you have any differences growing up? Um, differences like, as in like um like physical features. So I know um these twins and they are identical called Joey and Jonah. You know them. Is it because is it because the twins? So yeah. <laughs> if you, if, so like say for instance, if James met them now, you won't be able to tell them apart. Mm-hmm. But after you get to know them for a while, you can tell them yeah. like yeah. easily apart. Mm-hmm. Did you have anything like that? Um yeah, but I think people always say to me like, oh, I sound a bit more. Um, deeper or more chill than she does. Yeah, I've mm. got more of a longer face than she has. Mm. It's true. Mm. Um, she puts her seatbelt on in the back of the car. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 I always say like if you get close enough to my face, I've got like a little chicken pox scar there in the corner, and mm. like if I said that, everybody would be like really getting in my face like that, looking for me. And, like, mm. like okay, back up. What are you looking for? Mm. Oh, scar. Yeah, that's there. <laughs> I'm Caitlin. They no. They like literally tell us like, okay, look at me straight ahead, mm. and they go. Can't tell difference. Okay. Like, yeah. come on, it's not that hard. It's right, it's right here. Look. <laughs> it does, does it still happen to this day? Yes. Yeah. I, right I feel like it's yeah. happening right now, actually. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah to okay. say, like, even our family as well, like, our family who've known us since we were literally born, so mm. some of them can't really tell us apart or, like, they get confused mm. still. Like, our cousins and aunties, like, not my mum and my dad, they know it's like the back of the hand. Yeah. But I think our cousins definitely. Um, our older cousins, they get a bit confused yeah, mm. sometimes. They yeah. just shout, which one's twin? Amber, but which, whichever one come here. I'm like, okay. Our mum goes through her names <laughs> about four or five times. She goes, Amber, Kate, Amber, Kate. I'm like, mum, pick one. She, Amber like, Kate she literally <laughs> sounds like a skipping record. Kate, um, Kate, um. <laughs> <laughs> Say something. Say <laughs> something. <laughs> No, but like I'm not gonna lie, like it's still boss though the fact that how close you two actually are though still to this day. Like you just got like the four doors and you're trying to avoid <laughs> each other that one time. But you still I've got like that proper proper sister love and yeah. like it is a best friend and it's still cute to, it's cute Aww. to see. Yeah, there it is, actually is. <laughs> Even before like when off camera were you saying like, Oh, she's this and she's that, I don't wanna give it away but Oh, you're this and she's that and we love it and I was like oh my god this is so adorable <laughs> it's really cute. cute at the age of 27 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. say, yeah. like have you ever got like into trouble or anything like that and like the other one's always been like what come on then like I'm the twin I'm here hmm. um, I, I, am, look, I, I am looking at you on in this yeah, one I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm gonna be real I didn't hold my tongue in school I said the truth Okay. So if someone was bothering me, I was like, well, listen, I'm just saying this about you because you're saying it about me. Mm. She'd come to my rescue. Oh. I'd always get the backlash, like, your sister said this, this, and this. It's like, oh, what did she do now? And I'd go up to like, what's going on? Like, what is well, actually going on? I would tell you on? what was going on. People just don't like to be like, anything. 
I went, you can't say things like that. Like, because you'd call someone, me. like, you know, a bitch or something like that. I'm like, mm. you can't say that. But they'll have it say, say to me. Them. Do you know what I mean? So, like, give to receive, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, wait, just, like, just be honest. Okay, it's in the past. <laughs> you can't change it. Where are you being bitchy? No. Are you sure? Honestly, I swear. Are you just being, like, a bit of stand-up? I was just, yeah, I was standing up for myself. I was so tired of being, like, tread on because I was so, well, we were quite small. Mm. And then everyone was like, oh, ha-, you know, just thinking they can try and get like the wick of me. But no. Mm-hmm. I think they probably thought that because in the nicest way possible. I'm not throwing a dig. Right. I think she's easily wound up. I feel like when people press her button so much, she like just snaps. Like she's I, like, ah. I can see that. And then with me, like you can only push my buttons so much. Like you, mm. I can take and take and take until like I've had enough. Then you'll know if I've had enough. Mm. But so that's what sets us apart. Okay. I think she's patient. That's the difference on all She's just... patient. Yeah. But in regards to like, you know, people pressing your buttons, I think I've got more of that, more of lenience of patience than she has. I feel like she just goes, oh. And I'm like, because I'm fed up already. So. <laughs> I wish I met you too sooner. You know, you're just funny. Like, I really do. You're just funny. Uh, no, this, so obviously, the whole reason why we're here today, a bit more deeper, when like you're going through something, then does it hit home more? Because the connection that you've got. Yeah, I think so. No, honestly, it really does. Because obviously, well, well, once you go through something, I go through it too, because you're not going through it alone. Mm. Mm. You're literally not. Mm. She's my other half. She's literally the other half of me. Yeah. Is that the point where you just can feel each other's pain? Yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like we don't even have to know what's going on. I don't even know what happened previous to, as long as I know that she's okay, but I know there's something deeper. Yeah. If she's telling me, I'm all right, I'm all right, and I can feel yeah. there's something not right. There's I know. always that little um, twin in two, too. Mm. That we can always just be like, right, stop BSing. Tell me. No. Mm. Actually, don't tell me because I already know. <laughs> I've already read your mind. <laughs> That's not an actual thing, is it? Read the mind. Um, what? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to freak me out. This, you know. um, we need to start doing this. <laughs> so I think <laughs> this is taking a bit much. I feel like... Um, the whole read of mind situation, like twin telepathy thing, mm. with us, we just we can have a conversation with each other just by looking at each other. Like I already know what she's thinking; she knows what I'm thinking. So in regards to that, we don't like we can't read each other's mind. Like oh, I'm, you're thinking about you think about eggs or something like that. Like nothing like that. Eggs of all things, we just <laughs> we know when we're, when we're in a like a predicament, we know what each other's thinking. We know like okay, we need to go. Mm-hmm. It's a bad vibe. Let's let's leave. Mm. We just look. We just know. Oh, that's good though. We need to do better. <laughs> we do. Yeah. Oh, fucking hell, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's got a twin. He's got a twin. Yeah. Identical. Oh, boy or girl? <laughs> yeah, boy. boy, okay. Oh, yeah. Is he the oldest? No, he's the oldest. 20 minutes. Oh, oh 20 minutes. Yeah. Damn, one minute older. One Hold minute. Yeah. One minute. One minute. Must be no, don't be saying that. No, okay. <laughs> it was a it was a C-section. Shit. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, enough. not like yeah. a pew. Everyone thinks that. Like, Everyone no. thinks it's got like, like a camera, like a pure like, shot, like a pure rocket. Like, no, <laughs> even that's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. no, it is. My <laughs> lad, <laughs> twenty minutes to. Twenty minutes. Oh wow. But you were the bigger one. That's why it took twenty minutes. Oh. <laughs> so I'm out no, he's, he's fully not wrong. Yeah, I, I come out backwards as well. Did you? Yeah, yeah. So that, oh my that God. caused issues. No wonder my mum doesn't like me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'll say that. She loves you. She, she doesn't. She doesn't. The amount of times, like when his when his twin lived in the house and his sister, younger sister, was there, his mum would cook meals for the mum, the dad, his twin, his sister. Oh. No, James. The biggest portrayal, we got a Chinese on Thursday night. I was upstairs, but we didn't have them, you know. So. <gasps> That's good, though. That's good. So that would have been a bit rude, though, we're coming out of the worst mind. Wait, is it because you were just out the way? I offered them donuts, and then they didn't offer me a Chinese. Oh. So they're heavy. That's a bit But yeah, anyway, I'm a twin, so. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And now they're, now they're fucking off and going to Scotland and leaving them. So, stop it. <laughs> stop it. So what are you going to do? Move into my own place. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're all sorted on that one. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, he's fine. I've got a plan, though. He's got it sorted. Oh, bless he's got you. It oh, that'll be us soon <laughs> moving out. Oh, gosh, where was I? Uh, I always forget you're a twin, you know? Yeah, we're not as close as... Oh, you're not? You uh, have you got no. any other brothers and sisters? Uh, sister. One younger sister, one older sister. Uh, well, one older half sister. I, I've never met your older sister. Neither have I. Bit, oh. bit weird if you did. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to have on my bucket list. <laughs> to me, to be for you. <laughs> Hi, I'm James. This is best friend. Who's James? <laughs> uh, um, but anyway, going back to that before, obviously you're coming on today. I feel like we broke the ice not really good. Yeah. A bit too well. You want to come on and talk a bit about a story? Spread a message when you're on this important podcast, as you said. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Give us a bit of an insight before I start, like, reeling off questions and all that towards you and trying to dig deeper of, like, what it is that you want to come on and talk about. I just want to mainly, like, speak about how I overcame a very dark period of my life mm. about four years ago, um, mainly of the support that my sister and my mom and my dad and my family, like, gave me that I never thought that would really ever end up coming out because I just thought, right, I'm, st I'm in this really crap position for someone who I thought that was going to be me for such a long, long time, it never really turned out the way that it was supposed to be. And I think the way that I handled it, many people handle their situations differently. Mm -hmm. I think I just kind of locked myself away from the world and like kind of did not want to associate myself with anyone or anything. Um, I just want to spread that message that like it is okay. It does get better. Mm -hmm. It gets worse before it does get better. And even little things as in like, you know, meditation. I think what helped me the most was crystals, crystals and tarot cards that mm. kind of helped me steer out of that. And I have to thank my mum for that because she's one of kind of, I remember it's like a mangano calcite stone she gave me and that is what heals heartbreak. Mm. Um, I don't want to get, I don't want to cry. It's all right. Um, but yeah, it does get better and the way that you can handle it, that's for that's only temporary. It's temporary pain. It does get better. You've got to start loving yourself and believing yourself. You don't need anybody to support you. You just need to support yourself. Mm. And you can always achieve and accomplish and smash with anything that you want in life. Mm. And I think I can probably help somebody out there who's probably going through what I went through or they reciprocate the same energy as I did or relate to how I healed. Mm. I'd love to help them out with like that. Yeah. And I think, obviously, when we do this podcast today and we put her out and whoever listens, especially if it's going to be a lady, a female, woman, whatever they want to call themselves, they are going to resonate really well with it. And even if it doesn't come from the exact same scenario that you've gone through, but it's the same type of pain that they've gone through, mm. I think today will really help them out. And that's why we, we like... <laughs> We like starting off on a happy foot because people get to know you, they get to have a laugh with you, they get to bond with you through the telly in a strange way. They get to know you and then they will listen to you more. And obviously the way that you two are, the personalities, the banter that you have, people will see that already and then be like, yeah, I want to listen to her. And then she'll go, oh my God, remember when Caitlin and Jess? <laughs> remember when Ka Caitlin and Amber? <laughs> they, yeah, when Caitlin and Amber came on, he was like, that was really good episode that and but Caitlin said this she said she'd gone through that and I'm going to give it a go so um, yeah. I reckon I reckon we'll smash this today yeah, yeah. love that I reckon we start from the beginning because yeah. I feel like yeah. I also want like a bit of reality reaction of oh fucking how that actually happens so mm -hmm. take us from roughly from the beginning of like when you started noticing maybe changes or you noticed you went yourself mm -hmm. so from the very beginning I'll make it very brief mm -hmm. in a way. Don't want to go on too long about yeah, it. Yeah, don't have to. Um, relationship, first ever real, real boyfriend. Like, literally the man of my dreams, you know. I see a future. Um, we were together for a year and ten months. Things kind of started um, taking a downward spiral round about, I'd say, just after the year mark. He was very, very into his fitness, very, very into his bodybuilding and stuff like that. He is, like, icons like Rich Piano and stuff like that. So major major like bodybuilders he was into started going to the gym a lot um changes started happening he was like obviously really interested in, in competing in competitions and i was fully supporting him no matter what decision he decided to make i was always supporting him um i feel like at a time i didn't really have a life of my own i feel like everything that he did i always did with him i went with him if he was going to the shops get food i was there getting his hair cut i was there going to sit in his friend's house i was literally there so I feel like I kind of lost myself a little bit within this relationship because I feel like I put him on a pedestal, like the be all and end all, you know? Um, I watched him kind of destroy himself and that kind of took a toll on me. You know, he was taking steroids, he was having like mood swings, he was getting really upset with his parents. We went away to a trip in, um, in Scotland and um, 
he was he joined the gym like this is like his breakaway to not go to the gym and like i was at the point where it's like i can't tell him no because that's me not supporting his dreams and his aspirations and his goals so i can't say no and it was never abusive nothing like that nothing of a kind it was just me personally i was just supporting him no matter what and it got to a point where him and his dad didn't really see eye to eye about the situation he was like you know caitlin's come all the way from you know with us to Scotland and you're joint, you're going to the gym, it's not fair. Like you're being really, really selfish. They just got really angry and they scrapped in the kitchen, like had a fight. So I've come down to all like this ruffling and I was like, what's going on? And then I can see him standing there red in the face about to go for his dad. And I was like, I was shaking. I didn't know what to do. I was like, well, shit, you want to go to the gym, go to the gym, like do what you want. I can't stop you. But after that, I started to kind of calm down a little bit. And then, um, I remember I was getting my car and I had the reason why, because I passed my test, I was getting my car and um, he was like, I need you to take me to Birmingham because I'm going to be doing the competition and like, I don't want to, you know, be driving because I'm going to be really tired from everything. I was like, okay, fair enough, whatever. And then I got my car and then turns out doesn't want to go to the competition anymore. We're going to be going away. And I'm like, I'm rushing to get this car for you because you wanted me to drive. Anyway all that kind of cut off and then it was like little things here and there just started to kind of I can kind of see he, he was falling out of love of something but I didn't know what it was I think maybe he's frustrated with himself maybe he had his own mental issues going on I always ask you know if you want to talk about something then let's talk and whenever we would speak about our relationship and stuff like that I would get upset I'm a very emotional person um I would always get upset and I'd cry and he'd I was like I'm not trying to emotionally manipulate you that's not me like I'm just upset about this scenario I don't want to um I don't want to kind of go through it like I don't want us to break up or nothing like that and then um I remember him saying to me like I just don't want you to see our relationship through rose tinted glasses and I was like are you trying to tell me that you're not happy like what I'm, I'm so confused like I thought this was what we was going to be doing and I think I'm not going to say I was a victim of but I feel like I was more encouraged of love bombing because even for you you heard yeah. what he was saying he would always like say to me like i'm gonna marry your sister one day we're gonna have this big house we're gonna we're gonna be the family that i want us to be and every time he was saying that it was always i i i me 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 something like a narcissist would always say and i actually told him straight to his face when he was sat in our house in the living room you're a narcissist and you're literally love bombing my sister what are you doing if you're gonna say all these things, do it. You gotta propose to her, do it. Don't ask me to help you pick out a ring and all of a sudden it's gone. Yeah. And it was just, it got to the point where I was even, I was getting frustrated. I, I could not even sit in the same room as him. I'd have to take myself away to our bedroom while these two would sit in the living room and watch a film. Mm. I couldn't stand to be around him. Yeah. And I know he was doing to her. I think it just kind of stemmed from there. It was just more like, okay, and then. He was like, I'm not happy. Um, I was like, okay, well, if you want not happy, we could take a break. And he was like, I remember he was out in the car and he was like really upset. And I was like, I don't know why you're upset. You, you're the one that's not happy. Like, I, I, I can't do anything. It's not my, it's not my call anymore. We'll go on a break, see how we go, and then we, if we come back, we come back. If we don't, we don't. The break lasted a day. A day. A day. It lasted a day. Yeah. Um. And then we was right back to the way we was. He was like, I'm so happy, you know, we're seeing a future together. Like, I can't wait for you, you know, this, this, that, and the other. And then come November of 2019, I got a text. I was in work. I got a text. And it was like a big, long paragraph. And I was seeing him on that day. And then um, I was going to be seeing him for prior to. And it was a big, long paragraph. And he texted me saying that he's not happy. We're breaking up. And I was just, I was just, I was really hurt, basically. I was really, really hurt. I thought, this person, I've literally built up and put down and, like, watched him destroy himself, watched him take so many drugs and go out and do all these things and, like, me getting in on it as well. Like, you know, you're not going to do it alone. Like, I'll do it with you. Like, you know, we're that type of couple. Like, we're going to be great. From that to then being felt like I'd lost, like, I'd lost a family member. I was, I remember it clearly. I was, I was in, um, I was in the James Street Redder Spoons. I was working there for four years. Um, 
I've been working there for a year at this point. And then um, I was just, I walked out and I just started bawling, crying, like crying. I couldn't breathe. I was so, so distraught. No one even stopped to ask me whether I was all right. I was at the bus stop and I had my head in my hands, screaming, crying in the street. Like, why would he do this? Like, I was so confused. And he was like, don't try and call me because I'm not going to answer the phone. So I'm like trying to call him and he's not answering the phone. And then... um. I just didn't know what to do, so I called my sister, and at this point, she didn't have a driver's license. So I said, can you bring my car down, come and get me, because he's just broken up with me over Texas, don't run, like, I'm not happy. If you're gonna break up with me, come to my face and tell me. Mm. Don't be a, a coward and, you know, break up with me over text, and then kind of go on like, you're in the right and I'm in the wrong. And like, just because you wanna get everything out that you wanna say, that's why it's over text. You couldn't like sit me down and be like, look, listen, baby, like I'm so sorry, but I really don't feel like this is going to be going anywhere anymore. You know, he could have done that, but he didn't because he wanted to get everything else what he wanted to say. It was on text. And I was like, so anyway, long story short, she brought my car down with her boyfriend in the car at the time. I said, get out. I'm driving. So I'm driving up the road and then the back like that gripped onto the side of the car because I'm driving erratic because I'm so I never felt so more angry. scared in all my life. I'm sorry, but I was like, I was like, and she was speeding. Bear in mind, you had a black box, mm -hmm. so she was like going over. She was like touching forty on the thirty. I was going, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and then I got home, and then he went onto the phone to me. So I called his mum, and I was like, "Listen, I'm going to be coming up. I'm bringing his stuff. Um, yeah, I'll be there in about forty minutes, probably half an hour if I'm quick." So I gets there, and she's gr like greeted me at the door. She like left me outside standing there for about two minutes, and then. Um, she was like, you know, I did try tell him, you know, to do to, like to do it in person. I did try and tell him to stop, but obviously, he just wanted to go do what he wanted to do. He literally left the house to go sit in his friend's house, and then I was left in his mum's house crying to her. And she just looked at me, and she obviously knew how heartbroken I was because I I was love for the son. Like she knew, she knew I wasn't one of these people that just walk in his life and just be there for the sake of like I fully was invested like I took care of him the grandma and everything like because he did a lot he I did a lot do mm -hmm. you know what I mean and then for me to kind of just be trapped like oh, well you know like he didn't even oh well know. never mind you can pick yourself up I think that was the longest relationship I ever had and like my mom thought that that was it for me then like I was gonna get married to this person and she thought I was set I thought I was set, and obviously. I thought so too, literally. We all thought, like, I was one to say, like, I actually see these two being married. Mm -hmm. I really do. They're going to last a long time. But it was just his ways that I just did not agree with at all. Yeah. I think, obviously, during that time when I was with him, I didn't see the error of his ways. I didn't. I think I was just being blindsided by this person who I made up in my head, like, he's brilliant, he's amazing, like, he's everything I've ever wanted in a person. To then now, looking back, at what had like occurred, I was partly in the wrong as well. I could have pulled the plug and said, this is not for me. I don't mix with all these types of things. I don't agree with what you're saying. I could have I could have pulled the plug, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he was kind of scared for me. It's kind of, I, I don't know. It was just a bit of a very, very confusing situation. And I think from then on, I am um, just downward spiral. Mm -hmm. I was just in my room, in our room, just, I was crying all the time, every day, every night. I didn't eat, I didn't sleep, I didn't go to work. I'm eight stone, I lost two stone. I didn't eat anything like that. No food, no water, no nothing. I was literally like withering away, like so much so I got up and I felt dizzy and I just slept the pain away basically. And I just didn't really want to kind of be around. I didn't want to be present, I didn't want to be around. Mm. And for my sister to like watch me go through that, I felt bad, but like at the same time, it was like my pain that I was going through. And my mom kind of just walked in and she just looked at me and she was like, Caitlin, you're so, like, you're broken. And I was like, I know, I know I am. Mm. I don't want to be, but there's nothing else I can do and like I was always searching like okay he's gonna come he, he's gonna come back like he is he is and I was always so sure of it and like I'm, I know I'm talking about four years ago but like even still I like recollect every single feeling I felt from then on from the minute it happened to the minute it like kind of got better um I just didn't want to realistically at that point I just didn't want to be here mm -hmm.
I didn't. And then it was only until my mum kind of looked at me and was like, we're going to get, we're going to get you some help. Um, even during that time period of me kind of being with him as well, I remember I was in um, Liverpool College. I was studying a business course and I did it because I thought, you know, I can prove myself and I can, I can do great. I can, I can be smart. I can, I can do things. I'll do a business course and get more UCAS points, go into uni, do multimedia journalism. I'll do that. I'll smash it. I remember he sat there with me and he felt he like filled out the application for me. And um, he was like, right, you got a meeting? And I was like, okay, all right, I'm, I'm going to do this. We're going to do this for us. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. I went there, did the meeting, smashed everything like that, did everything that I needed to, got into the college, started doing a business course. And then obviously when we did break up, I was really, really low. I didn't want to be in, I didn't want to be in the college because the whole reason why I was, the only reason why I don't want to be here is because he put me here. And I don't want to be here because he put me here and I don't want to, I don't want to do it. I was in walking in every single lesson, anything that I didn't get, I had my head down like that. And I was just tears just dropping onto the piece of paper. And like, everyone was looking at me like, you know, what's going on? Like, like, why, why is she so sad? And then I had to sit there and go through counseling with the counselors. And I was in there every day. They knew me, tea, biscuits, there on the table. Let's talk. You know, they, they, they helped me and I, I can help, like say thank you to them. They helped me kind of get through it. But I was like, I'm going to drop out. I remember telling my friends and I think probably Joe, Joe even at that point kind of knew, was like, I'm going to drop out. Like, I don't, it's not for me. And I don't want to be here because it's not for my whole reasoning. My whole reasoning was because I was doing it for him. And then I was like, actually, no, I can kind of turn it around to be like, you know what? Thank you. I'll smash it and I'll do it without you. In a bit, I smashed it, done it, went to uni. And I went and studied in um, Ucline Uni for like a term because I thought I was going to bump into him and see him there. And I was like, mm, yeah, no, silly idea. I convinced myself that I was going to be doing something right. And I was just chasing somebody that just didn't want to kind of associate with me. And I was like, I'm, I literally have to stop it and rein it in, pull it back. And then even with the tarot cards and stuff like that, my mum introduced me to like the readings and stuff like that. And I think it kind of distracted me in a little bit, but still at the same time, I was still within that dark, that dark sense of. Um, it gave you a sense of false hope. Yeah. Every time she shuffled these cards on this bed, all you hear was like this clacking noise of the cards going. And I'd sit there and watch her and go, no. Mm. They're giving you a sense of false hope. It's part of the dark. Don't. Don't fall into that trap. Don't fall into that realm. And she did. Got to the point where she was at you every day. It was a chick three times a day. She'd sit there and shuffle these bloody cards. These these cards. And I said, we need to get rid of them. Put them outside the house one day. They just disappeared. They just vanished. Mm. So they were meant to leave your life. Yeah. I feel like now... I can definitely say that the crystals and the tarot cards, they did help me. Mm -hmm. Um, it's all like thanks to my mum as well and my sister for being there for me and like my dad I remember we was in Jamaica and he hugged me and we was in like we was in a casino seeing our like godmother and uh, a song came on that had like a little memory to it and then <laughs> and then um, my dad looked at me and like he, he could see that I was really like upset and he hugged me he was like Caitlin I'm gonna tell you something and I was like what he was like men are a wolf in sheep's clothing not everybody's who you make them out to be. Yeah. Believe in yourself and you can get through it. It's like, for my dad saying that to me, I was like, well, oh shit, he knows because he's a man himself. So of course he's saying that yeah. we're wolf in sheep's clothing. So get out of this little rut that you got going on. You're in a tropical island, like relax, have fun, be happy. You know, everything's all right. Drink a Bob Marley cocktail. I'm like, I don't want to, <laughs> but okay. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, the crystals and the tarot cards and like advice from other people, like it definitely helped me. But I feel like I was always searching for that, always searching for that. Um, that reconnection with them. Sometimes. Yeah. And I remember saying, so I'm going to see him one day. I am. I am. I did. Oh <laughs> gosh, we did. did? Yeah, we oh did. hell, we did. <sighs> it was in um, the races yeah. and I just looked at him and he looked at me and I was like, God, no. I had to like turn around and she walk had to away. Double, yeah, you had to double take because we, we, <laughs> we were with our friend and then just each other. We were like, what the hell? So she grabs my arm. She goes, 
Amber, who's there? And I went, what? They went in the boy cap there. And I went, okay. <laughs> so then I went over, I was like, hi. And I literally got, my arms were open. Bear in mind, I had like three Proseccos. So I was like feeling mad confident. So I went over, I was like, oh my God, hi. How are you? Oh, what's your name? Hi, I'm Amber. Oh, nice to meet you. Like pure, like buttering them up. And he just stood there, was like, this boy didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to do. He had to send his girlfriend away at the time. Oh. And I was like, Haha, I'm in your red. <laughs> and when you think of me, you think of her. <laughs> That's what that was. That was my plan. That's what I did. Oh, I, I couldn't. Did it, I couldn't even like even as much as I wanted to go up and say something. He didn't deserve my energy or anything like that. Mm. So realistically, she just went up and just like hit him in the arm. I was like, what's up? And then he was like, I fully punched this boy. And then, like I went, <laughs> and then we was just like, I'm <laughs> back. I've got like my friend going to me, don't look him, don't look him. I was like, okay, 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 okay. Can't no, <laughs> I can't. So I'm like, anyway, she finishes the little conversation and then walked off. There was nowhere else to walk, so like I literally had to walk right in front of them. And I was like, bye. Because I made that the last thing he ever sees. <laughs> yeah, and then after that, it was, um, and after that. I call my mum. Let me guess who's here. And she's like, "Who are we?" Beyonce. I was like, <laughs> "Beyonce." I was like, "You never guess who's here." And then she's like, "Who are we?" And so yeah, so and so. And I was like, "She was like, girl, don't even acknowledge. Walk past the head, hold high. You don't need to. You don't even need to speak to him." And I was like, "Okay." I thought she would have said, "You walk away, but tell Amber to go up and punch him." <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but I think that kind of sums up. Everything that I kind of went through, in a sense. Yeah. How yeah. long ago was the races? So like, uh, uh, what was like the timeline of it? Um, would you say like two years, three, two, three years? About after? two, three years. Yeah, we uh, broke up, and then I think the races was in March, was it not? It was a it was a ladies' day, was it? Ladies' yeah. day. Ladies we went day, on ladies' yeah. day. Mm. Um, what, what, I can't remember what year it was. It was just after COVID, I think. Yeah. Mm. Start to go and everything kind of started getting back to normal like a year after COVID, and then we just spontaneously just went. Yeah. It's like, I'm not gonna, he's not gonna be here, no. <sighs> okay, like, no. why would he be here? In all like, places, it's like, you're no. in my city, you don't even live here. Why are you here? Aintree races, get out <laughs> in a bit, bye. <laughs> go back to Wigan. And I feel like I remember we was like always walk around, and he'd always like spot me and go Ooh, and like turn back around. Like, what, what are you running for me for? You're running away from something. I ain't got enough to run away from. He might have thought you were an armband going to punch him again. Maybe. Good thing about being a twin. Sometimes a bad thing about being a twin. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah I, I kind of look now and I think I've achieved a lot. I've oh, achieved yeah. a lot since. One million <laughs> she's yeah. When I say she's achieved everything since this heartbreak, she's done everything she ever wanted to do in her life. I was in performing arts college at the time, so when she dropped out of the uni like, that she wasn't meant to be in, she came to Jelly Studios with me. Mm. And then I was in a year above her. We were doing auditions. We were just doing what we loved, like which was dance. So far, like I graduated at the time, so I couldn't be in that facilitation anymore. She stayed there. What did you do? Did Eurovision. And Wells. Cool. And then did Britain's Got Talent. We were Simon Cowell's golden buzzer. With, I was in the group called Unity. F off. Yeah. Seriously. So she was on Britain's Got Talent. S Simon's seventh golden buzzer. buzzer. And I was in the audience going, where's my sister? Look at me. <laughs> I was screaming at the top of the balcony. I lost my voice. Yeah. I was going, oh. golden effing buzzer. Ah, that's who it was who was screaming on the telly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, I was That's a cheerleader. Yeah. I didn't even know what had gone on because obviously, like, there's all the cameras and all the people and stuff like that. And, like, the, the group that we was in, amazing, beautiful people, like, inside and out, especially with the stories that were held as well. Like, it was about disability, it was about race, it was about, um, uh, just about like, equality, same, like, yeah. equality, like, same sex couples. Yeah. Um, it was just a lovely, lovely story to kind of, like, you know, portray and, like, put out into the, put out into the world and stuff. So, yeah, definitely. And then I look at the... I, I can't even watch the video now. I I'll be watching her after this. <laughs> I look back at it and I'm like, I'm going, oh, 
And I'm looking for my sister in the audience, like, where is she? And I can't see because I've got these big shining lights in my eyes like that. I can't see anything. But I knew she was in the top, like, right, like, left-hand corner, but mm -hmm. it was on the top right. Mm. I knew she was somewhere up there. I just couldn't see enough. Well, I'm on telly. And you know what? It's going to be so funny. He's going to see that I've been on telly. <laughs> and, and it was, was, it was like, like, like cool. a, It was like a little slap back, like, like this is what you could have had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could have been there with a journey with me, but you weren't there. So cool. it's whatever, but you know, I'm you know, no hate, no bad blood to anything, like good luck to him, whatever you decide to do. I'm happy being mm. by myself. I've been single for four years. I'm happy I finally found something within myself that I know is true to me. And that's like I love dancing with my sister, I love dancing, period. Mm. And yeah, and you achieved like, so much from it. Like you you opened Eurovision. Mm. You the grand final, yeah. You grand opened final. it as well. Yeah. The grand final. So she was with a group. Um, what was that name of that um, group? Kalush. Oh, they, they, they won it like yeah. I think a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. and I then she opened for them. I was like, I want to um, ask my girlfriend about this because she's obsessed. She wants to have Eurovision parties and all that. So I'd be like, oh, Well, you never guess who I had the podcast <laughs> with today. I was yeah. like, There was about, I think there was about 14 or 15 or 16 of us. We was like drummers. So we had like everything on like the blaze. We had like a bucket hat on and we had like, we had general drums on us. So it was like, We're one of the drummers. Mm. But yeah, for like a good 30 seconds, 50, like 50 seconds, it was really enjoyable. We had like in-ears and everything like that. It was crazy. Literally like pop star moment. I was so jealous. I couldn't even hear anything. Oh. Like I couldn't hear the counts because the crowd was that loud. I generally couldn't hear anything. I was like, oh my God, I can't, I can't, I can't hear one, two, mm. three. I can't hear anything. How long ago was that? Because I, I don't really know when. Eurovision. Yeah, I don't like, know. Last was it not 2023? Yeah. Yeah, when we hosted it in Liverpool. <laughs> The one in the, in the oh, No, room. like, seriously, as soon as I hear your vision, turn like, off. Like, your vision <laughs> village, like, yeah. on the waterfront. Yeah, I remember it being there. I just don't know time. It was within that same I blame week. COVID. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got, got COVID brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she said the same thing. She did. Yeah. But, like, the whole story, unless there's more to it, because I don't want to interrupt you. No, no so... That whole story that you've gone through, like I went through a breakup when I was 18 and it was my first thought I'm going to be with her forever and I went through uni and my depression and all that stuff came later. But that goes to show though, doesn't it, that there's always a brighter way on the other side. The grass is always green and like on them terms and you hear people like, well, like they could be married for years upon years or something and that, that is a bigger chapter than our lives. But you could do like, the last decision, if you get what I mean, like they could go down like a suicidal route, or they could go down a self harm route, or anything mm -hmm. like that, or they would have really fucked their lives up. Yeah. But you've gone the complete opposite way, yeah. and that's like the biggest gratitude that you could ever give to yourself. And obviously, it's the support from this one over here, which is on over and punching him in the arm. <laughs> but it is though. It's like no matter how low you get, how broken you feel, how much help that you need. There's always a way out. There's always something you can do, but you've got to drag yourself through it. Yeah. And you turn that around like when you went to college, you was like, no, he put me in, I don't want to be in there. Like, Wait, I can actually flip this over and do something for me. And then before you know, you're doing your vision and Sam and Carl's going, yes! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. I feel like there's not really much else to kind of, there's something else more leading to the story rather than like, if you are in a really, really negative place like I was, mm. research meaning of like crystals, because that will help you. Like I've got, we've got a collection. I've got a whole collection. I've got mango cancer. I've got rose quartz. I've got amethyst, lapis mm. lazuli. You're probably thinking like, what are all these names? But I've got all these crystals that helped me. As much as things, oh, it's just a rock. Like, no, it's not just a rock. This is right that carries energy. It can even reciprocate the frequency that you're matching up to it. Okay, so Sorry. <laughs> don't get up and walk out after I say this. <laughs> okay. I don't believe in crystals, but okay. but Each you own. could be the first two people that maybe help me lean towards it or be a bit more open to it. Go. <laughs> Come on, let, let, let's hear it. I want to know why why they helped you so much. I think the reason being is because obviously when my mum gave me my first ever crystal oh. and it was the colour pink and... What happens is when I had that crystal all the time, what was I like? I had, had it in my hand, I didn't let go of it because I want to heal this heartbreak. I wanted I wanted rid of what was ever going on and it was pink. And when it goes white, it means it's done its purpose. So as soon as like I kind of overcame that kind of heartbreak, it turned white. So I was like, okay. But in regards to the crystals, um, 
they carry certain energies. So if you're looking for like financial um, stability, or if you're looking for more of like an in depth of like what someone else is thinking of you, or what you would like to kind of read people's aura, or like kind of understand what it is that they think about you. Mm. Um, Citrine is a good one for money and stability. And also you've got lapis lazuli and amethyst. They're quite good for like your third eye, which is like your little gland here, mm. basically. And it's like mm. wisdom as Thank well. Thank you, lazuli. Um, everyone's got a, like, it's, it's, what's it called? Penal gland or something like that? I don't know. That, sa- that sounds really scientific it, and sounds <laughs> wrong as well. A penal gland? Everyone's got like a little gland. Say, so, like, that's what gland, they think yeah. is like, that's what is known as your third eye. Yeah. It needs to be activated because we've all got a third eye, but we all just choose to ignore it. Mm. So it needs to be activated in order to... Well, normally yeah. scousers get a third eye, but I take a magic mushroom. They're going camping. <laughs> they're like, oh my God, I'm woke. Fresh from these. Yeah. So I'm sitting there saying that I don't really believe in crystals, but Craig got me this, I'm and apparently say... it brings health and wellness, and I'm sitting here playing. But Is that jade? Yeah. I don't know. He, just, he brought it as a gift. It looks like a jade crystal. Jade also brings wealth. Yeah. It looks like one, though. Keep hold of it. Yeah. I need to be converted but first. <laughs> in order for them to actually work, you need to set the intention. Yeah. So you can't just go, yeah, you know, that rock, yeah, it's going to help me. Mm. No, you need to sit there. You need to, it's going to sound, I'm going to sound so crazy. Or so spiritual. <laughs> but I think I had about two or three like crystals in my hand and I like closed my eyes and like imagine that it was like a, like a bright white light, like a light beam, like flying down and like illuminating the rock in the, the crystals mm. and setting the intentions. Like I'd like this crystal to help me like find my soulmate or I'd love this crystal to kind of help me you know, bring me more money or bring me more stability or anything like um, pains, joints, anything like that. You can always put them on your body to help them like heal as well. Give me them, please. please. I need yeah. them. <laughs> got the worst bones so and need, joints ever. I think I need these now. <laughs> Set the intention and it will, it will literally help. Like as much as people say, oh, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy, but like I can actually say my mum got me a Labradite necklace mm. for Christmas. Oh, the Labradite necklace. You have to know the story. <laughs> God. Okay. <laughs> this necklace. If this person never sees it, it like off. no hate, like it was just one of those things. Like bear in mind, she never ever took this necklace off. She wore it like she just wore it every single day. Never took it off. I was so, like, you take that thing off. You little kid, <laughs> gonna stab you in the throat, bloody hell. <laughs> take the thing off. And she's like, no. It was <laughs> a sharp. It, no, it was like a sharp rectangle crystal though. Like it was like a little small one. It was a sharp rectangle. It was quite long. So I made the intention. A labradite crystal is like a wishing stone. So whatever you wish for, and if if you lose the stone or if it breaks, it serves its purpose. Like leave it alone; it's done. Don't if get you it find back. the other, if you find the missing end of the stone, you need to bury it because you need to return it back to its home growth, which was obviously from the ground. So, I had a labradite necklace. I was like, I just wished it would break up. I wished it break up. This person that he like. By the way, weird. this person. By the way, he got with somebody a week after we broke up. Is this the girl that is you cheated on you with? Yeah. yeah. No. Not no. even cheat, but like. I feel like Jeremy like, Carl's gonna come running through <laughs> now <laughs> with the cards. Not even, not even cheat. It was like, okay, so we broke up. Uh, no, not a week. It was two weeks. My apologies. It was two mm. weeks, and then he got with somebody, and I was like, okay, karma's gonna get you in the ass, and one day it will. And I was like, I said, and she's gonna break up with you, you know, she's gonna cheat on you. He was like, whatever. And I was like, all right, cool, whatever. Went about my business, went about his business. I got this crystal. I was wishing on it, hoping that they would break up. But like, just because of like, I was spiteful at the time. Because I didn't want no one else to have him but me. You were very oh. sour. I was sour. Were you sweet? I was petty. <laughs> I was <laughs> just mutual. Me, I was like, listen, I support you in whatever decision you do. I was just thinking sweet and sour. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hungry? Are you <laughs> hungry? <laughs> A little bit, yeah. <laughs> but I had this crystal anyway about... I think about a month, two months after having it on constantly, I was in the shower one day and I touched it like that. And I was like, oh, why is it short? I went, oh, it's broken. Oh, okay. So I went onto social media, just like minding my own business. And my mum did a little bit of digging because she's one of them. She's one of the girlies, you know, she did a little bit of digging and she went, oh, yeah, they've broken up. I'm like, what? <laughs> I went, what? And she went, you know, they've broken up. I went, my necklace, it's broke. On the day the necklace broke, the day they broke up. And I was like, ha ha, karma's a bitch, right? It's a bitch. But I don't know what that had anything to do with that or whatever. I think it did. And then I found out. No, it did. <laughs> yes, it did. And then I found out about a good, like, three or month, three months later as to why they broke up is she cheated on him with his best friend. I know. 
But it goes around, right? And I was oh like, what God. goes around comes back around. Like, here's me keeping my serenity, like, come by all all these crystals, <laughs> all these tarot cards. No, nothing is hitting me in the face. But you, well, karma served your mm. purpose, in it. Every, and then, every time you tell me a story, sorry, but every time you tell me a story, I always think Amber's behind it, you know? Sorry. Amber's always doing, like, the dirty work in the background, not telling you nothing. Not like she's yeah. like that. Yeah, she's your crystal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's a good luck crystal, though. Yeah. I feel like a good um, confidence boost crystal. I feel like we both support each other in that way. Oh, yeah, definitely. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> it was all good, yeah. yeah. I feel like I got her into the crystals as well. She was like, oh, what, is, what helps do this? What helps do that? I went, research, Google them, have a look. And I feel like that's when both, we both started going to like um, crystal shops, like yeah. Practical Magic, Magic Willow, all that stuff. And everywhere we go, we'd like carry a crystal with us. A lot. Mm. It'd always be yeah. in our little bags or like our little... Have you got one right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not today. Did you know I was going to ask that question? No. no. Oh. Stop so, it. No, oh, listen. it's so close then. It always happens. Yeah. <laughs> It always happens. I we really, don't plan it, it just happens. Yeah, I really, off camera, I really want to play that game when I say three, two, one, say something. You have to say like the same word without knowing what the word is. That used to happen to us in school. It's like, what's she thinking? Quick, say a fruit. I'm like, eggs. A fruit? <laughs> <laughs> eggs. Eggs is eggs. a fruit. Well, she said eggs before. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You've got a good memory. <laughs> You have, right? You. Me? Yeah. No. I've got the, my girlfriend hates me because I've got oh, the world's worst obviously. memory. Hates is such a strong word. Okay. Dislikes. <laughs> Despises me. Oh, <laughs> uh, strong. Uh, no, strong. Um, that is my red flag. That's oh. what that would that be. What do you mean? Uh, okay. No, okay. okay. <laughs> I was agreeing. Yeah, okay. It's you just went, oh, like you thought I was going to say a better word. <laughs> yeah. um, if you never got given a crystal then off yeah. your mum, where do you reckon you would be? Mm. Have you ever thought about it? Yeah, because it happened. I went down the alcohol route. Okay. Yeah. That um, was not a pretty sight to see as mm. her sister. It was more... She'd go out with um, a few friends every weekend. And she wouldn't even walk through the door. No, she'd fall through the door. So it would got to the point where it was getting out of hand. And I would just sit there and cry, like, why? Why, why, why this route? It doesn't have to be this route. You don't have to do this to yourself. Just speak, talk. I know. But then she always turned to the glass. Like, I had to pick her up one day from a club. And she wasn't even speaking full sentences. I was like, I just need to get you home. And I was angry with her because she was angry at the fact that this happened to her. So as a... Just take it down. Yeah, just take it down. Yeah. As, as, as your sister, I don't want to see that for you. Yeah. I don't. I didn't want that to happen to you. I didn't want anything bad to happen to you. So that's why I cared so much. That's why at times I was angry that you would turn to like wine and stuff like that mm. to try and help heal your heartbreak. But I get that you were going through a hard time, but you weren't. You weren't alone. I was there with you. Yeah. I feel like oh it was just it was really hard and I helped to dig out. Mm. Yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a because it was my first ever again, like I said, first ever real heartbreak. I'd never really experienced anything like this before, and it was a very difficult t time for me. I didn't really understand how to deal with it or cope with it, and I feel like when friends are encouraging you to like come on, have come out, like have some fun. Like I remember it. I had like literally ten pound in my bank because I wasn't working. Um. I went to this club and she's like, I'll buy you drinks. And I was like, don't mind, it's fine. I remember having three Skittle bombs and a, and a bottle of Heineken and then two glasses of wine. And that was me knocked out. Like I went upstairs to the toilet. Obviously I was like really sick. And then I didn't wake up for about a good like hour. I've got my sister like looking for me in the toilets and I'm just like head over the bowl. Like I'm soaked with water. And I went downstairs and came down. I was like, why are you shouting at me for? Like, I was so confused. And then she was like, we need to get you home. And I'm, then I realized, I was like, wow, okay, maybe I need to stop. And I just didn't. I think for a good month or two, I was out like every other weekend drinking. Was that the whole period, a month or two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then I just kind of was like, no, maybe this, this is not for me. This is not for me. And then trying to go back to work as well, it was even more difficult as well. Um, I didn't have the crystals at this point. Um, 
going back to work, my manager, I remember, um, Greg, he looked at me because I came and I was in on the early and I was just been like, my eyes were like swollen and like, I didn't sleep. I wasn't eating or anything like that. And then he looked at me, he was like, Caitlin, you can't work like this. So I went, I'll be fine. And I remember I was like bawling tears. And then she, he was like, no, no, go home. And they allowed me to have two to three weeks off work because of what had gone on. Mm. Um, but yeah, without the crystals, I was... That could have been a serious dark it could period. Have, yeah, like it, it could have really turned dark, yeah. really, really bad. I didn't want it to kind of turn bad. but I had no other way of like really thinking about dealing with it. I just wanted to numb everything that was going on. I didn't, like I said earlier on, I didn't want to be associated with anybody. I just wanted to kind of block it out. But I'm glad that I didn't. Mm. Was it your decision to go, like turn to the, the glass, yeah. as Amber says, or was it like... It was him? my own. Yeah. I feel like when you watch so many movies and you're like, oh, you know, the glug, glug, mm. glug with the wine and, you know, vodka and stuff. I think it was... Ma- mine was mainly wine. It wasn't like the hard stuff like vodka or brandy or nothing like that because I don't really like those spirits, but... um, Yeah. It was that. And I look back now and I think, oh my God, man. What an embarrassment. Why mm. Why did I do that? Honestly, and then the state of me walking out as well, I was embarrassed. I was even embarrassed to even be, I was like holding me up. I remember she had like my hair back and like fixing stuff in a taxi. I remember flinging the taxi door open and nearly the man kicking me out of the taxi because I was that drunk. I didn't know what I was doing. I just wanted to get home and sleep and just not wake up mm. because I'd embarrassed myself that much and I'd done a lot of silly things. It's, it's amazing isn't it? like you can spend hours getting ready to make yourself look like as glam as possible and then a couple of hours later you want to turn to the drink and then you you're swing like a clown. <laughs> yeah you're doing that and your head's over the toilet yeah, yeah. you never know your head could have fell in the toilet at one point I literally she looked at me and I remember I had these jeans on like oh navy God. like navy blue jeans she was like if you wet yourself I went no <laughs> I went it's water because I, I remember it was all down the front of your legs all like all your thighs yeah I like, I, did you re yourself the backwards? Sink, what's I happened? <laughs> I pressed on the sink and then the sink just flashed water at me and I was going. I was like, "Oh shit, it's all on my legs." I look like I pissed myself. Oh well, no one's oh, gonna wow. really ask. No one's really asked. I'm no one was asked, bothered so. in the club either. So yeah, so we just <laughs> but yeah. came out stronger. Mm. That was the plan. Yeah, a lot came more better. Strong. Stronger, better achievements achieved. Yes, mm. happy, healthy, smiling, Good mental state now. <laughs> happy mental state. Yeah. I feel like, oh, this is one big lie, because like, I just can't envision it, you know, the way that you two are. I really can't. I feel like you just, like, rehearsed this, and that's why you were late. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so today we're going to do this, isn't it? Yeah. Like, this, this, and that. We just recite uh, everything. No. no. But, no. like, like I said, really, I can't imagine it at all. Like, especially, like, you, like, looking like a clown over the toilet. <laughs> I, I just, it's because it's weird. Yeah, like. I can imagine you punching people, but... Yeah. <laughs> 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 but what was, like... The other support system, like, what was, like, your mum and dad? My like, mum was uh, very supportive. Yeah. Like, very supportive of me. She was... Any time when I'd even put the conversation towards this person, she'd always divert it to something else. Yeah. Flip it right back. And then... My dad, he was there. You know, I'm not going to say he wasn't, because he was. I mean, he lives in London, so it was very hard oh, okay. to always be there. So on yeah. the phone sometimes, you know, he'd always, like, talk to me, give me a confidence boost, and always give me advice, and... When we did go to Jamaica, you know, he was there for me. Um, my cousins, I remember going to a shisha bar on a Myrtle Street and my cousin, he came up to me and was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine, why? He was like, no, 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 but like, are you really okay? I went, yeah, I'm all right. And he was like, I heard about the breakup and like he took it the wrong way and stuff. Like he took a really, it turned for the worst. And I was like, I know, yeah, we do silly things and I feel like, you need to do a silly thing to kind of throw yourself back into reality, not into a, like a false reality where you think everything's going to be better in this dark side in scenario. But it's not. You need to just flip it. And he was like, exactly. If you, I'm always here if you need to talk. And I was like, thank you. I appreciate that. And this is like, oh, my cousin, he's like a guy. So he knows mm. what I kind of went through because he went through himself. But, you know, he's always, he's always been there. And he's yeah, yeah. always just a really cool guy. He's just, oh, he's, he's just amazing. Lovely. Yeah. Mm. It was very, very lovely. But my family, they were very supportive. My mum, very, very supportive. Of, yeah. I feel like they didn't want to kind of talk about him because it flipped me right back. Like, we don't want to put it back down in that that negative space anymore. Let's just be positive and, you know, 
you know, as our older cousin says, needs to cast our net further. <laughs> so, literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, very supportive. Uh, and where do you think you'd be without this one? Probably on Shield Road. <laughs> <laughs> Of all roads. <laughs> oh, I was not expecting I'm that. I'm only you know. joking. Yeah. No, not that far. No, yeah. I feel like I'd probably be probably blee. I probably would be um, working in a dead end job that you hate. Yeah. Still turning, yeah, just turn everything around. Yeah, I probably wouldn't be somewhere where I'm, where I'm not going to be too happy. Probably settling for less, maybe. Mm. I think I've been very very picky ever since then. Very picky. Is it picky or knowing what you want? Both. Mm. Know what I want. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, I'd say I wouldn't say that's then picky because picky makes you sound like, oh, I'm a picky eater, so I'm yeah. dead fussy. Mm. But knowing what you want is no, like, I can maybe appreciate that, but that's what I want right there. Like, I want salmon cars, but uh, <laughs> kind of thing. Like, like, I want that, I'm going to drive for it, I'm going to get there. Yeah. So I wouldn't say that you're picky, I say that you're driven, F- focused, determined. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Words are the most powerful thing that we can use. Use them properly. Wise words, wise words. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, this one must be giving me wisdom right now. <laughs> <laughs> I believe. No, <laughs> but literally. It, but I'm guessing you've come across men that have gone through like their mental health stuff, and that you've had conversations with men. You probably get try to give them the pep talk. Yeah. When they've come to you about like what they've gone through and what you've gone through yourself, has there been like any similarities, or are men and women just different when and they deal with it differently and they react differently? Um, so like I said, we have the two guests that we've had on, they haven't really opened up about themselves. Yeah. So we haven't really had any women come on and be like, no, this is what it's like for a woman. We've had plenty of men, and we always hear about it, but from a woman's perspective, yeah. what would you say? Um, I feel like I've never really had anybody that's kind of come up to me and was like, you know, I've been going through this, this, and this. I feel like, yeah, I have. And I've always said... um. Don't go out on the on the piss. Don't do silly substances. It's only going to make your mental health, like mental health even worse. I've always tried to give them advice that I've learned from mm. and what I've kind of experienced. Um, There's always been a stigma around men opening up as well about yeah. how they feel about a certain breakup if it breaks them or if it shakes them. Mm. Just oh, just talk, man. Yeah. There's nothing weak. Put that in quotations about yeah. a man opening up about his feelings, about how he feels about a certain situation. It makes you human. It makes you relatable. It is gonna help you further in the long run. If you sit back and suppress everything, it's like a coke bottle. You can't see shake that coke bottle. It's gonna explode. You're gonna explode if you don't open it. Mm. Open up. Speak. I don't think there's anything embarrassing about no, there's speaking. nothing there's no. nothing to be ashamed no. of I feel about like, speaking. Yeah, from the two previous guests, they've spoken like it's a, it's a society that's been built, like everything's compressed. Like if you speak about something, if a man talks about his emotions of, you know, whatever, you know, he's this, is that and the other, and it's not really valued. Whilst if a woman does it, it's like, oh, she's very strong and independent and like good on you for speaking up and like being you. It should be that vice it should, it be, should be that, that overall, like, overall period. Yeah. Period, it shouldn't it? really be subsided to like I feel like men feel like they have to always put on a brave face no matter what or be the strong one do you reckon that comes from back in the day though of like men yeah. being the provider and it's still like that common yeah. like thing of because I, I still feel like that to this day so for instance if I don't have enough money to go pay for the meal for me and my girlfriend mm-hmm. that was meant to be today so I was just like thank god that was not that oh. yeah uh, we're going later in the month it's fine just reschedule but it's like I would feel bad saying, do you want to, do you mind getting this? Because I want to pay for the kind of thing. Mm. And I was like, is that a bad, no, like, a, no. No? I don't think no. so, really. I feel like during, like, obviously with your situation, it, sometimes it can't be helped. Yeah. I've done that in the past. Like, my ex-boyfriend, like, literally, like, we would always, I would always pay for the meals and I wouldn't, it wouldn't phase me or bother me. So, can it's you, fine. Can you tell her that? Hmm? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah well. I can speak to her. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Honestly. I'll bring her now. it's it's no big deal yeah but it's like do you feel like that's embedded in those though as men and like growing up and like you you say like you see it in films so people tend to drink but in films you also see men are being like the providers or something like that men are trying to be men kind of thing do you reckon that's just embedded in us or do you reckon we've learned that no it's it's embedded Mm. I think it's it's a weird one for our age range anyone like kind of 
twenty-one and above anyway, because I think our parents are set in that mindset anyway that men are providers. If mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. So that's what you've grown up around. That's what's been nurtured. That's what you subconsciously go towards. Whereas I think maybe people who are younger nowadays, below twenty, they've not really grown up around that. It's tried to be equal. It's tried to be. Do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's, it's a bit different nowadays. But for us, yeah, definitely. You are a good speaker, you know. Thank you. <laughs> you are quite knowledgeable. Thank you. From stamp, only from stamp to stamp, though. <laughs> oh. yeah. That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> I did want to ask, though, what, well, well, I am. Oh. Yeah. Also, don't forget, yeah, just bounce between cameras. I am. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, from your perspective of a situation being going through and being very close to somebody, how hard was that for you to keep to yourself whilst also having you know being the support system for your sister what was what was that like through that process wow. um yeah, fucking got the question it you, was you know. it was really difficult to kind of keep that inside knowing that my sister is going through like through the most horrible thing anyone could ever go through i went to an audition to a performing arts school so jelly and it was a contemporary, and then she was like, right, what's this, what's this, what's the storytelling, what's it about? And then I was going, heartbreak, heartbreak. I was like, oh, okay, brilliant. How ironic. Mm-hmm. So then I kind of put that emotion, what she was feeling and what I was feeling at the time, into that audition. And I got called out to say, like, I did really well. And then I was crying, like, I was on Jennifer Ellison's, like, oh, I'm crying, going, oh, my God, look at my sister's going through heartbreak, oh, she's like, oh, come here, I'm so sorry, was it the song, was it the song, I went, it was, but it really helped me, like, channel these emotions into dance, and that's what dance is, so knowing that she was going through that in a way, she helped me, and knowing that I can go home and help her heal anything I can do for her, I would, doesn't matter what it is, I would help her heal, we'd sit there, we'd listen to songs, we'd We'd be jamming like this, <laughs> like that, you know? <laughs> and then when she finally, finally got into like the performing arts school, it was just better than ever. But just take the take your time with each other and just speak. Mm. And just <laughs> dance it out and if yeah. you need to as well. Uh, well that's what dance is, and like I'm I'm no dancer, like and I've got no rhythm whatsoever, so never ask me to dance ever. <laughs> I can sing, not um <laughs> but that's what it is, isn't it? It's it's all about the art, it's all about the embracing, it's and putting it all out there. It's exactly, yeah. I, I don't even know how to describe dance. Like, it was it? I, I, I done a Zoom podcast two weeks ago, and I was with a guy in America, and he's like this life coach. And he went, you've never seen someone angry dancing. And because it, it releases so much, like, joy. Mm-hmm. And releases it. So, where you've had all that built up inside, yeah, of, like, what my sister's gone through, and you hear that song, it releases all that positive energy then. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think dance is so good. It, it is. is. Yeah. It, is. it, it is. is. I think the style of dance that lets anger out is called, it's called crumping. So a lot Cramping. Of crumping. 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 Yeah. yeah. So it's a very, like, it's aggressive, aggressive type of dance. Would you two stop this? Just <laughs> <laughs> if you look it up after here, you're n- it's just all, like, arms flailing, like, chest pumping, like, stomping. It's all... It's all it's just, just like built yeah. up, yeah. built yeah. up. Yeah. So, I feel like to channel heartbreak into a contemporary dance, it's it's very very beautiful. Mm, and I feel like I was so proud of when she came and told me that story. It made me cry. I was like, oh my god, sorry, but thank you. <laughs> it really did help. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You know, I really do. It to say that, that that aggressive dancing is just like for what we would use as football. Or the gym, because we can get aggressive in football. Mm. It's like I'm going to score and start, like, you know, popping moves and stuff like that. Start, <laughs> start crumping on the field. <laughs> but that, it's just, it's just, it's another way. It's it's exercise for us. And, like, I'm, I'm big on exercise. He's big on exercise. So, so we know that's, like, a really good way to release. So yeah. a few weeks back, I had a really big argument with my girlfriend and I had football. And I went to football in a proper pissed off mood, dead angry at the world, wanted to not talk to him, went to football, watched a few people, threw, threw a few people on the floor. And in, in like a nice way, it weren't like a <laughs> malicious, it was all in the game. But then I, I left and I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy, I can't wait to go home. But <laughs> 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 it, it is, and like, that's your way of releasing it. Yeah. So like, as you know, with Tom, Tom goes to the gym um, and he releases it. Is that, is that way Colby will go to the gym, we will go to the gym, but we will play football. And it all does come down to 
that exercise and getting up. So have you ever heard of Tony Robbins? Tony Robbins? The motivational speaker in America. No. I just no one heard of him. I've asked about six people this in the past two weeks and everyone said no. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Got but basically, you probably recognise him, but he's like this motivational speaker, life coach kind of guy. And when he does conventions before he starts and they like really get deep into it, he'll get everyone up and start dancing. Oh. Because then it changes your physiology and your body and it makes your staff become happier. Oh. And so then when he starts talking to you, you're more open than to hearing stuff. Oh, wow. Well, that's good. There, there you go. Learn something new every day, isn't That's it? That's an eyebrow raiser. No, it is. <laughs> it is. It is. It is an eyebrow raiser, yeah. Did you know that? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, of course I did. Are you dumb? I knew that. Oh, my God. The dancing has actually, like, helped us do everything. Like, we competed. We did We did so many things together. Like, we went to Dance World Cup. We are... Um, what else did we do? A Dance World Cup. Dance yeah. World Cup, yes. Yeah, so it was like a competition uh, abroad. So we actually like flew abroad to compete uh, in a whole range of styles and everyone all around the country was there. Where did you go? We went San to San Sebastian um, yes, in Spain. San Sebastian. Yeah, it's World expensive. It's like, did you pay for it? Yeah. yeah, we had to pay a lot of money. <laughs> I wouldn't pay for it. I'm not Canadian. There was a lot of money. It was a bad one. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. <laughs> no, it was just it was just a lot of it. We were just there like living our best lives, just enjoying each other's like company, like being around the like everyone and yeah. doing what we love, like on a stage and then winning a gold medal for it. Like come on, that's, it was that's really, really good, very rewarding. Winning <laughs> <laughs> a gold medal. We're like this with the other <laughs> Oh my god. I'm I'm so jealous I don't have a twin, you know. I really do. Oh. Yeah, not your twin, but I'm so jealous I don't have a twin. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I can't. Th- that's what our relationship is about. It's being really horrible and mean to each other, Aww. and we are fully admit that. So, what was it? Um, we'll have to cut this part out. Like, but I said I was arguing with my girlfriend, and he was like, "Do we need to get my footy boots on and go down and two footer?" Uh, oh but it's like God. stuff like that. Like we all know it's so harmless, but that's what like gets us together and like. I think it's cute. Yeah. That's a battle. It's, a, yeah, it's I really love nice. That. Yeah, I love it's that. he's a nice guy. I can tell. I like you. You're like me. <laughs> Definitely. Do you want name Jess? Still <laughs> Jess. He doesn't want to get. He doesn't want to get Jess thing going. Fucking idiot! Look at Crystal. He's trying yeah, to send one. you some healing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I don't know. And um. I don't really have many more questions. I have got a lot of questions there, but I haven't really used any of them. Because I feel like you kind of summed it up when you was giving us like the story of it, mm-hmm. and then you started going on a bit more. Because honestly, I wanted to go chapter one, we talk, chapter two, we talk, chapter three, we talk. Mm-hmm. And you just went chapter one, two, three, talk. Oh, <laughs> but, <my> I, <laughs> but I could see that you went into it, so I didn't want to interrupt or anything like that. But have you got any questions? How long have you been running for? Uh, an hour uh, eleven. An hour and eleven. I do have a question. Yeah. Also, for obviously you said um, for people who don't have a close relationship, let's say with their siblings or their family, but you're saying that crystals are an outlet. Um, for people who don't have then a close relationship or have a sibling to rely on, what would you suggest for people in that situation to go and do what should they actively kind of seek out or for people? wondering how do I help what's the first step for me to pick up crystal how would they go about doing that oh man oh, uh, told you it's good <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everybody's got that one friend that they can always call their like the brother the sister you know the other close family even if they don't have one I feel like be having a crystal is a is I think a good way to start and then going from then on building up your collection and then finding serenity within yourself maybe it may be a very like lonely journey but it'll be a journey that you'll be grateful that you took um i feel like that probably going out and partying is not a good idea because obviously you can go down a route of uh, irresponsible drinking <laughs> but um alcohol is a depressant so it will make you it, worse yeah it does yeah. it will make you 10 times worse but um no, yeah, 100% self-healing, 
as much as it may be a pain to sit there and go off on a city and listen to this bloody music all by myself, oh, but it will help you. Mm. I still do it now. There's certain there, yeah. listen to music, I put my yeah. earpods in. I'm good, good as gold, right as rain. I'm ready to take on the day. Um, ready to wax people's eyebrows. Yes, ready to wax people's <laughs> eyebrows. But yeah, I feel like it, it will probably be like a lonely journey, but it'll be a journey worth taking. And I feel like you can always talk to somebody. And I feel like after you've reached that serenity and you feel like you are still struggling, then I would definitely recommend seeking some professional advice, mm-hmm. helping out maybe um, therapy. People in America, they do therapy for, for, for fun. Do you know what I mean? You have like uh, a I wanna do virtual that. therapy, you yeah, know? I want to have a therapist and a check-in with like once a month yeah. kind of thing. So That'd be good, uh, like weekly check-ins with your therapist yeah. is quite like an on-call, yeah? Or Definitely. meditation, yeah, literally meditation, yeah. like group meditations. There's someone on Crosby Beach, there's like yeah, five there institutions. Yeah, mm-hmm. they do, you like do anything. This, there's like a little walk thing that's going on. Heart there's a running, guys. um, that running thing. Like, Made run or something. Yeah, it's like a they nightly do. run. People go like, this guy runs with a back, big fat speaker on his back and everyone just goes, just behind him. Yeah. Can I imagine being the guy at the speaker? You've got to stay at the front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, Craig, bring him up again. I've seen, so I've got like a real good connection with Craig lately. He just done like a really big walk in Sefton Park today and then they've all went to Press Bros on Lark Lane. Mm. It's even like stuff like that. Yeah. Put, like being a part of a group, community, mm-hmm. social things. So have you just ever heard of Two Step Collective? The Two running club. Step. I am, yeah. yeah. I think that's, yeah. Yeah, they, they just go, go running together. Yeah. But it's another thing to be a part of. Yeah. It's another thing to not be alone on. Mm. Like when people go to a gym, mm-hmm. they will find people in there that they can bounce off and they can become friends. People go and play football. People go to dance. Yeah. It's, I think that's probably, the more I think of it now, probably the biggest, one of the biggest ways to be able to get out of like them dark yeah. places is to not be alone, not fight it. Because you can come across as so many people and they can all have a different opinion on life. You can just take bits and bobs from each person mm. and you can just add it more and more to your library or to your bookshelf or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I agree with that. Yeah. Even like going out and just like getting a facial or like going to like a spa or if, if you're a female or a male, you can go get your makeup done. There's so many people that come to the store that I work in in Cheshire Oaks. As a makeup artist, I, you know, get so many people coming in going, oh, I can't do a horrible breakup. Oh, I'm not feeling the best. And I will literally sit there, speak to them, get all the products, and I will literally just, like, give them a glow and go facial, and I'll do the makeup free of charge. Like, literally, it's introducing products to them, and then they're like, oh, you made me feel so amazing. Thank you so much. And even that can make their day mm-hmm. feeling good from the inside out, bringing their inner beauty out. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. yeah, I completely like, like I relate on that as well because obviously I sit there and I wax clients like literally all day every day, so it's a bit of a therapy session when I'm sitting there and I'm talking to them like oh so tell me all about your eyebrows you know what's going on with your life like where are you going you got any plans and we just delve into like life like it's just a therapy just talking to somebody as well so therapeutic mm-hmm. can help yeah. you don't have to go to some random shop but I mean you can if you want to go to some random shop get your hair done and just talk to your hairstylist talk to your therapist talk to your gym buddy PT maybe your PT might be a bit like not my problem you're only here to work out cool whatever do you <laughs> but again it's just talking I feel like just a lot of people kind of they subside and press their emotions down. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I kind of learned from the past relationship. You kind of just shove everything down to a little box and you're like, I'll go, I'll come to that later. I just think everyone just needs to speak up. To speak yeah. Up. Mm. And it's, it's not hard, is it? It's really not hard to speak up, but we have like this sense of like pride and like ego inside yeah. of us. But it's also, do I feel like a burden on someone? And why are you going to put problems on someone that's already got their own problems? That's how I feel. That's a, it's a hard one. That's yeah. how I feel sometimes. Sometimes I don't speak to people who already got problems as is yeah. and I was like I don't don't want to be a burden go on you two soft sweet joke <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah was it, was it me and you talking about this where we, we were saying like when girls like do you feel they might need a chat they can go and get the hair done how long does it take to get your hair done roughly mm, I feel like I've been to salon in like three years um, normally about like an probably well, about well the way we do our hair is like four hours four hours and how long would it take to get like makeup or like waxing or eyebrows waxing, it depends like obviously waxing is about half an hour to 45 minute service and then makeup is more like a 45 to an hour service yeah so you've already given us like three four things that you can go and get done mm. and we I, was it you yeah we've only got haircuts oh. oh 
So when we go and sit in our barber's chair, we're there for like half an hour, 45 minutes. Just talk to you, Barbara. Yeah. yeah. Like, I get a facial from there for over an hour. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So good. I've got to get a facial. Yeah. Because yeah. that, like, I love that. My, um, my, like, when people say, like, their type of love, like, man's touch. So, like, when he's got, like, the gloves on, he's, like, rolling around with that. Like, <laughs> that was in the chair. Like it like yeah. That. It's great. I love, I love that, Michael. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Can't wait to get him on here. Um, and you've been talking about meditation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That'd be good. Um, but that's a thing that we miss out on. So for us, like if you was to get a partner and he's really big into gaming, would that be a bit of a thing for you? Be just be open and honest if, if it is. The last person that I had a relationship with had an Xbox I want to launch out the window. Mm. <laughs> It's I heard your mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said that. No, it was always like, oh, babe, I'm on the game. I'm with the, I'm with the boys. I'm like, you've asked me to come round. Yeah. Okay, that's different. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. crazy. I'm like, what's mm. going on? Because like but... me, me and him, we're both games. So like John Cole was like, we used to game like every day together. John and Call of Duty for like eight hours. Mm. Really and and that, that we, we were both single. Okay, so we had the time. But we were also trying to like, do like YouTube content, like yeah. funny videos. We were really successful. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't a very like positive, like kind of like. <laughs> um, but, but for us, like, and we can only speak for ourselves. That's our therapy. Yeah. We were able to jump on with the lads, and it could be for four hours. I'm not gonna ask like someone to come around. Like I live with me here if I'm not. But if it didn't, someone else to come around and jump on. That's just rude. Mm. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's but, a nice guy, but yeah. Still. But like, if you just were, would you just be more open and like aware and understanding of that if he wanted to jump on for like an hour or two with his mates? Yeah, because yeah. like, yeah. cool, do what you want as long as you know I'm still here. <laughs> I'm, still here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. You know, I travelled all this way to see him watch you play cards. Nah, but I'm still here. You just sat on the couch, still got your coat on and all that. Waiting. Yeah, I'm on TikTok <laughs> anyway, just chilling. <laughs> just in the like. Cool. <laughs> are you done yet like that yeah. that so, was me <laughs> yeah. so if it takes clients half an hour 45 minutes depending on how hairy they are maybe 60 could have a hairy back who knows <laughs> uh, <laughs> eyebrows 45 minutes let's call it an hour and a half and then let's add another hour that's two and a half hours mm-hmm. might have to give the future boyfriends two and a half hours on the game yeah, yeah cool. no, that's, that's day. absolutely fine day. but that's okay are they getting okay. paid to play on the game though Whoa, whoa, if they're doing whoa, whoa. Twitch streaming, then yes. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, if you're doing whoa. Twitch, yeah, but if I'm getting paid streaming. to wax people. Oh, that's my job. Yeah, but you're getting paid to wax. That's your job. But I'm talking about if you were a client. If oh. he was a client, yeah, okay. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if you're getting paid to be a Twitch streamer, you probably won't have to work. Okay. <laughs> 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 Big brain. Yeah. Yeah, but um, to be honest, I don't really have much else I want to say, you know. Yeah, I feel like one of them it's i'm happy have you got anything are you sure do you have anything that you just want to ask us oh we're open we are open i didn't think books. about this you know right. i thought it was like mainly you just asking all the questions I no we, we always say to people at the end like yeah. have you got anything because when people come on a podcast i think people forget that it's a podcast not an interview mm-hmm. so it's just about conversation and like yeah. he was the what what episode was you episode 10 so it took 10 episodes for someone to ask me a question wow yeah i know i felt like really left out i know exactly Aww. punch punch them you got nine <laughs> people to punch yeah okay i've got one for you okay obviously you're listening back to what i've been through mm. obviously you said you had a breakup at 18 mm-hmm. how did you kind of deal with that yourself anger going out crying hating the world yeah so it never and it never ended the best. And she'll probably never watch this off and say the story. She was talking to a bouncer behind me back. Oh. This is like when we all started going to town. So she worked in one of the clubs in town. He worked in a club around the corner and like she would go to that club with like the people from work. Um so that started. And then I found out basically that she was talking to him, but she denied it. So I done the thing which I shouldn't have done was I checked the phone kind of thing mm-hmm. but I kind of got what I needed to know but then she still continued to lie so that was like a big thing and then like I went to uni um, and then it all just kind of spiraled it was always just on a downwards hill 
so it was that, but obviously I was 18, I'm very emotional. Like I've only started to get over my emotional stage like the past year or so I've become like not numb, but a lot more in control of like my emotions. And um yeah, it's I was in town every night. I sometimes went like fourteen nights in a row. I always remember that. Drinking a lot. Um and then I just started like really hating the world, not going to uni, not giving a shit. Um for me to the point of dropping out of uni saying I don't want to do this anymore. Um and I was like mainly yeah. It was just, I was just young and all that. I didn't know how to cope with it and that. Um but yeah, that, they were like the main things. I didn't really do anything beneficial. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I feel like if it was me speaking to eighteen year old me, like sat and down, it'd be completely different. But then it's not like I didn't have the guidance from like my mum or my dad. They were always there, they're very spawn. I'm so lucky to have them. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to hate the world because I couldn't have hair at the time. Yeah. So I was a bit like, oh, no, fuck off. I don't care. This. I, I don't care about anything. Le- leaving uni, going out drinking. Mm. What are you going to do? Mm. So, yeah. Right. Awesome. So mm. I feel like a lot of people have their first heartbreak at like 18, 19. I think mine was very, very late. 21. 22. Mm. So, 22, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay. I mean, I don't know. So, but I dealt with it in the most weird way ever like self-healing like, sabotage way ever yeah but I'm, I'm 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 happy that i've i went through that because oh, i feel that was like my question are you happy you, it happened yeah i'm happy that i went through that because i feel like anybody who kind of does go through it i can always give them advice and when i have like kids myself you know if they go through situations like that i can always give them advice that i got given from my sister got given from my mom and my dad and it would hopefully help them or if not crystals <laughs> Mm. There you go. Crystal. Crystals of meditation. Uh, yeah, crystal <laughs> meditation. Not so much tarot cards. I must say, I did go to a couple psychics, though. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah I went to did. a psychic a few months back. Oh, over, really? the, over the water. It's very strange, though, is it? The way yeah, they it, it was the quite. Um, I'm not going to lie, it was, it was a bit spooky. It is. To spooky, say the least. Is it? Yeah. It, it was mental. So, my girlfriend went. I can't remember how she found out. See, this is what I mean, red flag. I can't remember. <laughs> but she went and she's like, no, no, it's really good. And no, I'm always like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, fine. And she was like, you'll go. And so she paid for me to go. So we went over the water. And I've um, gone in there. And there was this like little woman. So she, she must have been about there on me. Oh, and, that's it. and she like, came over and gave me a hug. So I'm proper like, oh. like that. <laughs> Giving her a hug. She went into this little room. And um, she got like these cards. And she was like, pick a card and all that. And then she was putting them down. She went, this means, I can't remember what they meant. But it was like all pictures on the cards. She's like, this means that, this means that. And I'm like, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. And she was like, something big's gonna start happening for you soon. And I was like, I'm starting a podcast in like two weeks. And then she was like, and you're also gonna have a career change. I went, I've just made the decision I want to become a, like an online coach and personal trainer. Wow. But everything she was saying was like correlating. Um so it, I did find that quite weird. Yeah. And, uh, and then when I left, my girlfriend was there and obviously she, like I said, she went to it and she was like, oh, Did she say anything about me? And I was like, No. <laughs> Yeah, no. I was like, no. Did she say anything about me? No. Yeah, it was, it was just what? all about like me. Mm. So if me and her ever break up, blame the psychic. Oh, oh. damn. Yeah. The I feel like fault. Yeah, yeah it's the, the psychic. psychic. Yeah. The psychic I went to, it was on Smithdown. It was in a house. Yeah. She had like about three parrots, whatever. And I was like, okay. And then she walked in. She's like, stand underneath this light. Like it's like a spotlight like this. She's like, I'm gonna do a body scan on you. And I was like. And she was like, you got, yeah, you're blotchy here, so that means you're psychic. And I was like, okay, amazing. She's like, you've just been through a very hard heartbreak, haven't you? And I was like, yeah. She was like, that will get better soon. You'll see him in a couple of months. You're going to get married to this person in a couple of months. And I was like, it's been a couple of months. I'm not planning to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Your time scale is off. <laughs> but she did tell me, she was like, you, Shrimps, you do suffer with depression. And I was like, oh, that's what it is. And I was like, oh, Okay. I went to a different one, and this, this one was like over WhatsApp as like during lockdown. And then she was like um, picking out these cards for me and stuff like the Fool or the Madman card and stuff like that means like big adventures are coming your way in the next couple of years. And obviously, big adventures they happened, they came, succeeded. But yeah, I can't really remember a lot from the from the psychics mm. a lot. Like I think I went to about three different ones in the space of like two years. I was going to say like three days. 
No. <laughs> they were reading sure. everybody else I wanted. Now it's your turn. No, nope, next. Mm. I feel like I was always searching for the like the answer that I wanted to hear. Yeah. You know, not that I needed to hear. There was a difference in between what I want to hear and what I needed to hear. I mm-hmm. think what I needed to hear was yeah. get rid, stop, like stop, you imbecile, stop <laughs> thinking about this idiot, stop it. And I was like, I feel like I finally like. You finally have let go now. I yeah, believe fully. That, like that ship is fully sailed. Feel like I'm it's just gone. It's yeah. burnt. It's fine. It's in the it's, middle of the ocean. It's a, yeah. It remains like just seabed. <laughs> <laughs> seabed. <laughs> I don't know. I've fucking loved this. You know, <laughs> this has been posh. I feel like this has been like the perfect balance of everything. Yeah, that's mm. been. Um, but no, seriously, so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for coming on. Like, Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for coming along. Oh, no. Thanks but, for having us. Yeah, yeah, but, like, it's it's, uh, it's, it's, been, it's been a beautiful one, this. It's been, it's been heartwarming. Uh, have you got any questions? No. no. We're good. Have you got any questions? No. You can literally ask the stupidest question in the world if you just want to be nosy. It doesn't have to no. be about anything related <laughs> to this. I have no questions. No, no questions. All right. So... Mm-hmm. But seriously, thank you for coming on today. And if you ever do want to come back on, you're more than welcome. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the twin <laughs> thing again. <laughs> yeah. There it is again. All right, come on, bang it off, lad. Underneath. Yeah, so that was the episode today with Caitlin and Amber. I really hope that you did enjoy that today because that is cemented. I'm not going to say favourites, you know, not out of favourites, but that was a really, really good episode. I thought that they both spoke well. They both shown the importance of having that support around you. And I really hope that someone can take away a really good message today. So thank you for watching today, for listening today, and we will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.